It's that time. It's talking time. I'm your host, Kai Teibel, and welcome to the third episode of Teibel Talks. In today's episode, we'll be talking about dating in Islam and its relation to me as a young Muslim weaver, and maybe even some of my past relationships and how they relate to this. So, without further ado, before we get started, hit that like and subscribe button, and without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first off, what I want to start off with is the fact that when I was reverting to Islam, one of the main things that I actually had a hard time with, honestly, I would say was dating. I didn't really find out as much about it as I wanted to. When I was first learning about Islam, I didn't really understand the dating like phase or process. I kind of just understood it as, oh, they just have a talking stage instead. And I didn't really see it as very legitimate, if that makes sense. And I think that was something that I struggled with at first because I just didn't have the right resources. And I actually would like to thank the Institutes of, I think it's Yakin Institute. I'll try and put it on the screen. And also um, Mufti Menk. I think and also there was an episode on YouTube that I've watched over and over again it's a really good episode and it actually taught me a lot of what I know today now as dating in Islam and so when I was reverting I really struggled with that honestly because dating in Islam as I've gotten to know it's so much better alhamdulillah is that you know dating in Islam is very different than the American way that I've been taught And that's mainly because, if you didn't know, in Islam, dating isn't exactly the same. We're dating for marriage and not for fun, which actually really related to a lot of my past relations. And so as a revert, what I didn't understand is that, you know, you're talking for marriage and it's very serious, but also it's very much something that you do when you're ready. And it actually grants you, I think I would say, honestly, a bit more freedom in, um... In choices because a lot of people misunderstand Islam to feel like it's oppressive to women but the thing is is when it comes to marriage you know you do more of a talking stage and while it may seem like it happens quickly that you um, decide to marry this person you go through a lot of different phases and stages so when you even go on things such as dating apps which obviously you know I'm very young so I haven't really considered it but I thought you know maybe that would probably be helpful for me because I'm a reaver you know what I mean but you going through dating apps and things such as your friends really helps the process and you basically talk to these people about different things such as you know do you plan to have kids in the future do you plan to do to do this do you want me to you know do this like what are your expectations for me as a wife what are your expectations for me as a husband um you know like just different little things you know not every little detail will obviously be discussed because there's just some things you know you're not going to discuss like sex life for example is something that i think you really wouldn't exactly be discussing per se but you know what i mean like it is obviously important to sometimes tell certain things and dating in islam i think can really be westernized sometimes so i think that's something that i struggled with a lot as a reaver and i'm so thankful because what really happened for me was as i got closer to reverting to islam i really found that sorry there's dogs barking i don't think you guys can hear but i can and it's quite bothering me <laughs> um sorry um so i'm trying to think back to what i was saying but as i was saying so what happens is you feel this need to want to date people and when i first was wearing to islam because i had been struggling with this i was still kind of going through talking stages which i know was very much not like exactly right but i kind of was trying to understand it because what i was doing is i was going through these talking stages and i was trying to understand why the western world why we do things the way we do it because for me you know i mean i realized like i wasn't dating for marriage but i did want to have futures and was trying to think of futures with the people i liked that was part of it like when i would like somebody or have a crush i kept trying to think could i even see myself having a future with somebody and what i realized very quickly was that i actually wasn't 
on the same page as a lot of people and I think that really made it harder for me when I was in these talking stages with people to understand you know dating but what happened I'm looking at my notes because I took some notes on this because I got really excited um and I grew I started to get more and more attached to the dating world of Islam and detached from the western American like dating and I think that really allowed me to grow but I also think as a reaver there is this girl and I've stated this actually in my reaver story so if you haven't watched that you might want to catch up a little um this girl Kay who um who I would say really helped me to revert to Islam she, seeing that she had you know been Muslim and still is Muslim to this day and hasn't dated anybody really showed me that you know it's really a choice and it really is more freeing because instead you get to focus on what you want to do um she wants to be a doctor so um inshallah she does well in college I'm always wishing her well but um she wanted to be and wants to be a doctor and so you know she doesn't have to actually worry I feel like too much about the dating world because she'll do it when she's ready and also i loved that as i got more comfortable and started referring to islam she would talk about it more and be like oh you know she's like if a guy really wants to talk to me you know she's got to go to my father first which explaining that to my parents has been a bit of a difficult thing so i'm still working on it but it's been a bit easier over time alhamdulillah you know i made dua to allah about like you know opening up their hearts so that i could explain islamic things to them and so that really has helped me and so now to kind of like switch it and go a bit more to my past relations i'm not going to obviously be name dropping because i just i i i don't want to obviously like take away people's privacy and stuff but in my past relationships what i was realizing is i was obviously having as i've said before this disconnect and this disconnect i think was really coming from um you know not being on the same page and so i would literally be trying to date people at first and i think a lot of the time the reason that it failed was partially because i'm super romantic and so i'd want to see you know i'd want to like actually get to know them and more like what they want to do in the future because my anxiety has made me such a planner and being such a planner sorry guys i lost my train of thought there but as i was saying having anxiety just made it really difficult because i was wanting to plan so far ahead and obviously i was super young at the time so that you know that was a struggle of my anxiety and now as i've gotten older i think it's a little bit easier because now i'm eight, about to be 18 <laughs> i keep saying that but i'm about to be 18 so it's a bit easier but i think part of the issue is dating in islam people don't um i've noticed that a lot of people want to make muslims feel bad for wanting to date the way they do but i found that there's actually a lot more success and that although there is divorce in islam you know what i mean in that i know in some communities it's frowned upon i don't think it should be but i've noticed that because of you know the way that we do do dating in marriage and stuff like that i think there has been things that have proven that like you know the divorce rates are better in a sense like they're lower and i know that that's probably yes it might be you know what i mean like it might just be to some people they may just be like oh well that's just luck yada 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 <sighs> but i think really for me i found that when i was watching and listening to these muslim couples it made a lot more sense and it was what i wanted to do and that's part of like what drew me to some more <sighs> like this dating process you were getting to know the person but you were also looking into things ahead of time do you want kids are you looking to you know do you want to travel like what's your income like do you live with your parents or if you're in or like if you know you're in college like what are your plans after college like do you want a job do you want things like that and i've noticed that dating in islam seems to have this like westernization for some muslims and i really always want to encourage if you are muslim and watching this and you know maybe you're younger or even if you're not you know always just try and encourage your kids you know just remind them you know that the process that you're going through i know it may seem like it's a hassle and jump throughs but as somebody who's been in past relationships i promise you that actually trying to talk and get to know them about things that they would want in the future is a lot better because it's better to know them early than later and i've seen that with a lot of people for me 
I'll give some examples. In one of my past relationships, I wanted to know different things. And I want to know, I was like, when I was studying religion to my member, I was like, what religion are you? Because, you know, I don't really know. Actually, I'm exploring religion. And so for me, that was something that I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, maybe if we were both exploring religion at the same time, you know, that would make it interesting. And then also sometimes I remember I was dating people and I think this happened like at least with three people. Later on, I would find out they were like, oh, I don't want kids. And I'm somebody who has been given, <laughs> as my friends love to call me, I'm like the mother friend. So like being a mother is something that I know that I would really want in life. And whether that is to be a foster parent to children and get to give them the love that they need, you know, just for that period of time that they need it for. Or or if I have my own kids, inshallah, in the future, you know, I would love to be a mother. I love to mother people and I love to be nurturing and guiding to people. It's just something that's always been in my nature. I've always loved kids. But, you know, when you're dating people, when I was younger, I was finding that out later and it really made it harder for me because then what was happening is that being in the back of the mind, that being in the back of my mind really like pushed me away and I was like, oh. I was like, oh, I'm not sure anymore. And so that would lead to breakups. And that was something that I think really was hard on me. And I wish, I wish, honestly, I just, I really do encourage that even if you aren't Muslim, you know, to really, if you're talking to somebody, get to know them for more than what you think. Because you may think that some things are important, but if there are some things that are absolutely important, I think it's so important that we, st we stop stigmatizing, like, muslims and ourselves as western muslims for for wanting to date it's okay to want to date but i'm telling you as a reader you will you will you will have less regrets and also it's better to get to know them the way that islam does because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to guide us and he's trying to you know put us in a better position and so you know it's just it's literally just little things and so, oops, I guess I put a little too much. Eh, it's fine. So, I would say as a like reaver that you know, like it seems like, you know, like it may seem like it's like, oh, this is such a hassle. Like my parents are, you know, bothering me. But like honestly. Islam, you know, doing the dating we're doing is trying to give us a choice and we really should be taking advantage of that. And it just led to a lot of heartbreak. Like I remember I was dating somebody and literally like the biggest thing for me was I didn't realize how I'll give it to them. I don't want to say bad, but difficult. I didn't realize how like difficult it would be to communicate. I'm I'm going to cut that part probably but this person like they just had a difficult time communicating when they were in stressful situations and for me one of the biggest things for me is to communicate in stressful situations because the thing is you know i feel like if you're in a stressful situation and you're not communicating it is it is literally going to harm you in the long run because for i know this for, like communicating is such an essential thing and that's why i really felt that like draw to it and i feel like dating in islam also is just something that like it just it's not talked about enough and i think if it was talked about more i think younger generations such as my generation because i'm gen z if you can't tell because i'm literally about to be seen like if you can't tell gen z is literally like i think it would make it would maybe make it easier for us you know what I mean? And I think maybe it would draw us more towards, um, I think maybe then it would draw more kids towards Islam if we showed them the benefits of it. You know what I mean? Because, like, for me, some of my past relationships, I'm going to give more and more examples, sorry. But some of my past relationships, I was literally, like, I don't even know how to describe this. I was literally, like, showing vulnerable sides of me with people just for us to break up in the long run and i know for a fact there are some things like there are some things i would have rather you know there are some things i would have rather had at least with somebody you know what i mean who i'd be married to which actually isn't too much honestly because you know 
and also i really hope that if you're a and watching this don't feel ashamed if you've done more you know what i mean because i think a lot of people just don't realize dating in islam is not meant to harm us it's not meant to make us feel bad and yes the dating the dating phase i'm using a lavender palette because i love lavender because we're doing another lavender outfit today but so um i really would say that like it's not meant to harm us. The Quran is here to guide us, if anything. And it's not here to harm us in any way, shape, or form. And I think that dating in Islam really needs to be talked about more. But I also think some, some of my biggest things I've noticed is that I feel like a lot of girls don't realize I'm like, if, if, if your relationship is built on haram stuff, what makes you think it's going to last? on haram it was the foundation is already not as strong because it was built on haram stuff you know what i mean and also i'm not a scholar so please try not to take like anything that i'm saying super personal like i'm really trying i'm trying my best because somebody commented about it and i thought it'd be really nice to do it and it's something i'm passionate about and like if it was built on haram stuff what makes you think it's gonna last for example i thought that i would do like a talking thing with somebody because i thought okay maybe Maybe I'm, like, kind of ready. Maybe. And what I would say is, is that I'm, like, if you build it on Haram foundations and not doing things the proper way, it's, 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 it's a weak foundation. You want to build a marriage based on a strong foundation. And that is my biggest thing, is that I feel like a lot of us are scared. A lot of us are scared to to actually also go into this process because we keep thinking, oh, I need to really have done the best for myself. Oh, I need to really be like, have everything together. And the truth is, you'll never truly, I don't think, be ready. Like, because it's, it's, it's a process that you're trying to almost delay. And also, sometimes it might just be better also to go through friends going through friends it would probably be way better than you even realize because if you if they trust your if your friend trusts them then you know for a fact that it's probably going to be way better foundation wise like think about it if your friend likes them and other people or like people recommend somebody for you then that means that they see something and it is okay if it doesn't work out but at least try and and here's the thing also if you're if you know you're not ready like that's okay because sometimes you'll know if you're not ready but you won't always know when you're ready and here's why because thinking that you're ready for marriage a lot of people just don't realize you're you can go to therapy as much as you want you can try and fix so many things but the truth is you're you're not used to being and living with another human being i mean I will recommend that, obviously, you know, taking care of yourself and trying to be in therapy and things like that. I really recommend that because mentally and health-wise, like, you should be taking care of yourself first because you need to be able to take care of yourself first before anything. Because you're not only taking care of yourself, but you're taking care of two human beings. And you're also going to be dealing with a lot of things that are new and fresh. And, you know, I know that that's not going to be easy for anybody. It's not going to be easy for anybody. But you might as well at least try to make it, you know what I mean, easier while you're at it. So, you know, don't be afraid to also ask those questions. Do you have, do you have, you know, for example, asking about like, how do you handle such stressful situations? If we were fighting, what would you do? Like, those are actually really good questions because it's, if they shut down when you're fighting, that can be a red, a red flag for you personally. For me, I know that in stressful situations, I need to be, I just need somebody who's at least going to communicate because sometimes I can get upset, right? And I might be like, I'll give an example. So sometimes when me and my parents are getting like, you know, let's say a little argument or something, sometimes I'll be like, hey, I'll be like, I'm really sorry. I don't think we should talk about this further right now. I just need some time and space and just to think, and then we can come back to this, okay? Right? So sometimes you just need to know because if they shut down in stressful situations or they get angry really quickly in stressful situations, you know, that might be something that you might want to look for because depending on how you how you handle stressful situations, that can affect the whole entire dynamic and then how they handle it. That's something even bigger. So I feel like just... It's okay to want to ask questions and don't let pe people, oh my god, sorry. Don't let people make you feel bad for wanting, oh my god, I can't think. 
Don't let people make you feel bad for wanting to ask questions. It's better that you ask questions. It's better you ask a bunch of questions than not at all. And also, you know, it's okay to feel societal pressure because of your friends around you, you know? I understand for me that, like, some of my friends, you know, they do date and they do things like that. But, you know, obviously I try and give them the best advice that I can, like, based on, like, their situation. And usually what I end up telling them most of the time, honestly, it's really funny, is I'm like, I'm like, you need to remember that, you know what I mean? You both have feelings, but also that you need to put yourself first sometimes. And when it comes to marriage and things like that, you're going to have to deal with a lot of things. And I really recommend also reminding yourself that what you see on social media is not, like, I'm not going to say it's not real because some of it is real. But you need to remember that couples don't show their fights. No couple's going to show their fights. Like some of my favorite couples on YouTube, they don't show their fights. You know what I mean? Because, like, I don't think anybody wants to show... <sighs> them at their most vulnerable you know what i mean and also that's the thing with marriage you're being vulnerable so you know if you can barely be vulnerable with yourself you really got to be honest and and think about what marriage is going to be for you because do you want to be married because you just want somebody or do you want to be married for different reasons you need to be figuring out why you want to be married because if you're going in to try and get married for the wrong reasons it'll make the whole foundation as i've said weak marriage is like a house you have the foundation you have the foundation you have the underground works which is like the organs of you and your genetics and their genetics right and those make up part of the foundation which is the rules and ground breaking that you set and it's okay to have boundaries you know what i mean like it's okay to you know, be nervous and be scared because you're doing things that you've never done before. Especially when you first get married. I know for a lot of, you know, Muslims, you know, they haven't had their first kiss. They haven't had sex. And, like, obviously, like, that's more taboo. But don't be afraid to ask your parents and talk about it. Because it's better that you talk about that than you not talk about it. Because if you don't talk about it, it can really put you in a lot of danger. Because you need to be knowing these things. You should know, you know, what's safe, what's not. And it's better to be safe then sorry. I know it's cliche. I hate to say that, cause especially the way I said that. That came off, like, probably so cliche. But I promise you, you will not be sorry if your marriage is built on good things. And I really think that also you should watch videos from scholars, too, because I think there's a lot of scholars out there who make good videos. And especially if you're young, too. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay to you know what i mean to feel that pressure but don't let it don't let it push you to do things you don't want to do if you don't want to look into marriage you know what i mean you don't have to you know what i mean not everybody wants to get married when they're young it's okay to get married when you're older and it's okay to break stereotypes and also i would really recommend listening to the islamic feels podcast because there's a podcast episode i'll try and put it up here of literally they talk about how you know being in a a multicultural marriage is going to be beautiful but you know it has its ups it has its downs but it's also okay to set boundaries but what's not okay you know is for you to give up on something because you know of what your parents say sometimes if you talk to a scholar your scholars might be able to help you so going to your local mosque or finding a scholar around you in your area who can help you can be a really good thing and honestly i really have loved um a lot of scholars reminding us that, you know, it is, oh my god, that's a lot, I just realized how much that is, oh my god, <laughs> y'all, y'all, I just put so much highlighter on my nose, oh my god, oh my god, I'm trying to rub this out, okay, <sighs> it's funny, actually it looks a lot better, it looks a lot better off, uh, on, in the mirror than it does on camera, I promise guys, I didn't put too much on. And so, I really just recommend, honestly, just using your resources around you. And I feel like dating in Islam shouldn't be as taboo because, you know, while a lot of scholars, well, a lot of, I'm going to say not scholars, I've seen this more with a lot of people in the comment section, say there is no dating phase. You can just honestly call it a dating phase because it's like, it's like a talking stage. And as a revert, that's kind of how I've seen it and how I see it. It seems like it's more of a talking stage than anything. And it's okay to have standards and have boundaries too. I found that a lot of girls have said that they feel afraid. A lot of girls feel afraid to have 
they feel afraid to want somebody who prays five times a day and things like that and while it is bare minimum it's better to have those boundaries set up in your mind and don't settle settling is never the option do not settle i promise you settling will not help you it'll just make it harder for you if you settle you're not going to be happy in the long run and that's going to come out in ways that you don't want it to so you know just trying your best honestly not to settle you know what i mean and also making ist istahara i'm pretty sure that's what it's called literally i know how it's spelled but it in talking to a lot about it too can really help you you know what I mean? It's great to listen to your parents, but it's also great to listen to Allah. And by talking to Allah, you're allowing yourself to open those gates. And Allah listens to those who call upon Him. So remember that, you know, if you call upon Allah, Allah will answer you. Allah listens to us. He listens to those who call upon Him. And it's better to ask Him than not to. So, you know, why put it on the line? You know what I mean? When you know for a fact you can, you can make it better. And so my main thing with dating in Islam, I think, is that while I struggled as a revert, I really think it is up to you to figure out how you want to do it. But just remember that, you know, there's a reason that we have rules, rulings and rules and things like that. There's a reason they're there and there's a reason that they try and help guide you. You know what I mean? There's a reason that they um, are established and also... You don't have to settle for, for marriage either and cultural norms, you know what I mean? Because, like, if your parents, for example, um, want you to marry somebody of a certain ethnicity, that's okay, but don't let it be, like, your only thing. If you have standards, you have standards, and that's better to have than not to have, honestly. And I really think that it's just something that you should... I really think it is something that, you know, you should, um, I just really think dating in Islam, honestly, is meant to be the way it is for a reason. And from my past relationships, if I've learned anything, communication is key. When you're dating, communicate thoroughly. You know what I mean? When you're, I guess, dating yeah, I guess that's the right term. Communicate thoroughly and don't be afraid to have standards. And don't settle. But also remind yourself why you're doing this. And also, don't be afraid to look for help. And also to watch videos and learn a about the right things. There's a reason, you know, you're trying not to kiss and hold hands before. Because the thing is, you never know how somebody is until you live with them. So, you know, even asking questions about the way they live and things like that. That's super important. And you don't want to skip over those things. And if they don't have, like, you know, goals, what makes you think that they're going to have goals when they're with you? Or if they don't, if they don't want to pray before they met you, what makes you think they're going to pray now? after they're with you like yes you can be a motivator but it's not going to help them and they're not going to be praying for the right reasons so if anything even happens to you you know hopefully not but like if anything happens even divorce or anything you know they could lose their will or want to pray and so you really want to set good groundings and also you know when you're looking at these people remind yourself why you're there in the first place and yeah i'm sorry i feel like i'm repeating myself all over again and i hope that that makes sense because i think that you know it's just something that you have to figure out on your own because everybody's journey is different and mine was getting in these relationships and realizing that i need to slow down and also that i need to also you know follow these islamic guidings because they're here for a reason and that these islamic guidings are here to help me and not to oops. these islamic guidings are here to help me and not to hold me down so just remind yourself that you know these islamic guidings are here to help you not to hold you down not to make you feel bad but to encourage you and push you to push you to do something better so I hope that that was helpful and I hope 
that, you know, if you do decide to go into dating or, you know, dating towards marriage and talking or talking or dating towards marriage, that you um, follow those Islamic guidings and that, you know, don't be afraid to do things the right way. It's better to do things the right way instead of a good foundation. Remember, marriage is like a house. You want to have a good foundation and then you build up. You build from the ground up. You want to build the foundations because strong foundations will create longer lasting results. So while my makeup is finished, I did want to add some little things, so I might add this in while I'm talking at some point. But I think, as I've said and as you've noticed, consuming Islamic content will really help you because when you're consuming Islamic content, you're going to do better and you're going to learn more. And so it's okay if you're not as good of, as it's okay if you're not as good at consuming, you know, religious or Islamic content at first, but getting there will really help you. And I found that by consuming more Islamic content and even just watching videos on these things and listening to podcasts has really helped me and made me grow as a person. So I hope that you guys, you know, learn to consume more Islamic content. That's also what helped me in my hijab journey. If you have not watched that video, you should totally go watch it. It's the second episode and it is in the Tybal Talk series and you can find that in the playlist of this channel and if you are a little confused by some of the things that i've been saying then you guys might want to go check out those videos the first episode i talk about my revert story and that explains a little bit of my knowledge on dating in islam because yes i was in past relationships and you know i know that's not like what we do in islam but that's how I got here, and it has helped me learn tremendously. So, consuming Islamic content and my revert story really have played a big and huge factor into this. So, thank you, and I hope that was helpful. This topic was because somebody commented, so don't forget that you guys can like, comment, and subscribe, and then you guys will be able to help see maybe your topic on the next episode of Tybal Talks. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Bye-bye.